All right, so now we're starting what I'm going to call phase three. So we've got really all of the, the drawing kind of laid in, blocked in, and we're really starting on kind of more fine tuning and detailing to an extent um, in the, the areas where it needs it, like we've done here and here, but really all over. And so that's really the next phases three and four, kind of in phase three of this part two-part drawing. Uh, so uh, let's continue on there. Always kind of keep your drawing clean where you see smudges and things that you need to. So always important uh, there. All right, so I'm going to start in now detailing out really through here first, over here, then, then probably in through here, and then I'll just kind of make my way around. It's going to take a while uh, to get there uh, for sure. So I think also before I start, I'm going to go ahead and kind of, this is also serves as my, my warm-up. Sometimes I'll do, I'll work on my background some, and that's kind of like a warm-up too because it's kind of loose and flowy in general. And so I need some more darker values back here. Bring it tied up against that edge. Right, I want to bring it up against that edge. <clears throat> and then we can start to lay in tone here in kind of a hatching manner. I mean, you could stump this out if you wanted to, and you could smooth it out and blend it using your hands and fingers and things of that nature. But, but for right now, we're going to keep it more of a real sort of super kind of traditional Renaissance Baroque kind of sketch drawing. <clears throat> and a darker tone, getting it up to that edge. Keeping that edge nice and crisp so that it reads the softness of the folds reads against the contrast at the edge like our eyes normally do. So we mimic what our eyes are doing and how, and how we see. So if you're really interested in how we see, I have a video in the formal linear perspective section that goes into more detail on how we actually see through perspective and how our eyes function in an optical way for drawing. It's not a medical uh, recitation or lecture, but it's how drawing in your eye and how we see function together. And for drawing purposes, just going back and satisfying a little bit more of this background so I can see this a little bit better and stronger through here. So as we begin to lay this in, this might go even a little darker back in through here. And we might say that our core shadow might just get a little, a little bit darker just by a touch or just a little bit through here. Don't get bogged down in every single detail yet. We're still at a, we're detailing now, we're beginning to go into that area, but we want to keep it still within reason so we don't get too bogged down and we have a chance to correct and alter. <clears throat> you generally have a chance to correct almost all the time through a drawing unless you're, the, the medium is so unforgiving in some way. <clears throat> You'd be surprised by that. So just taking this Reflected light here and toning it down just a little, which darkens in the core shadow too if I need it. Just a little bit here, a little creasing through here a little bit. <clears throat> to come through there, it's looking pretty good for what I have up here. So a little dot of lights up above where it turns over. I'll start to get into, right in through here, pick apart that a little bit, where it lifts, kind of lifts over there. <clears throat> this comes in front of it a little, like so. 
There we go. And it comes over the top of it and in behind it. A little like, like that. Real delicate little area. <clears throat> I'm darker here now. Then later on we can get our background if we want to take it to another level of darkness, which we probably will in the future. I can begin to do that, but I'll do it later on since it's not terribly difficult to figure that out, I think. Okay? All right, now moving on, I'm going to move into this crevasse area. So most of this is underneath. This comes up on top. This wider area folds and we have a folding in and then another layer of folding in. So we're going to take sections now. This is also kind of how glass is done well, is you, you get the broader picture, block everything, and then you start taking it in sections, and you kind of treat it like flat areas for a while until you start thinking about it in more three dimensions. So let's keep that in mind. So let's start over in through here. And so I'm going to break down now areas that I have, and we're going to come through here in this kind of triangular area here. So I'll mark it so you see it right in through here. Not all the way down, but about right in through here where this fold ends. To here we have this thickness there and up. And so I take my hard edge and I just lightly give it another edge. It's kind of straight anyway, even though it's kind of glistening and falling up. And I move my hard edge to catch it here and on up a little bit. But I'm primarily concerned where it's the this, this darkest area of triangulation in through here. So that's very much just recognizing the shape that I have and beginning to work through that as well. So we have this kind of curved, pleated part of the bedspread fold in through here. Does this. So I can take, notice I have my, I'm holding it my the pencil holding method or writing method. And that's because it, it requires a pretty pretty detailed little incise line for now. And through here and up and around it's going to come over and kind of get faded back into this fold, this pleat here. And we'll take that in. There we go. And then so I'll kind of dig out this little lighter area around where that lighter part of that fold is right through there. Coming up, okay, and this, and this is going to loop back out just a little bit here, right, because this is a stronger edge, and we're going to come up, and you can see where it's kind of started in that darker general tone that I have. This is much harder to do in painting. kind of have to do it a different way in painting, but... Folds up and through as it's coming over and then it really wants to curve in, doesn't it? And sort of hang out and then kind of dive behind that fold about there. Roughly right into there where that edge is and we can catch that a little. So I can strengthen that up a little bit later as well. Kind of right in through there, that's going to help that fold. <clears throat> okay. So what that does for us here and here is get us a little understanding of what all this is doing for this stronger little triangle, which is kind of where that darker line comes through that I see, right in through here, and then up and over and in, and then tail about right, maybe a little bit higher, right, right in through there. There we go. And see that little darker area of shadow that'll help me right in through there. I can go a little a little darker in through there. <clears throat> so 
So it's all about just taking your time. It's, it's a two-part drawing. It'll be by about six or seven hours, which really isn't a long time for a drawing. <clears throat> it might seem like it on a YouTube production, but it's really not. <clears throat> and then this bolt will come up, and you can see it's, it starts to pick up here again, where it crevasses and pitches in through. Then you see how it's pitching upward and then folding itself kind of in here and then over right through. Here. And up and through and over, and we're gonna kind of have that now. See, I went higher than I had it before. And take that dark and fill that in for now. There we go. Until I change my hand position to do that. <clears throat> go. Now, so now we've got kind of a border area that we're going to work in. We're going to work it all in through here and really pick that apart a little bit and make it accurate, really accurate to what we're doing through here. See, I'll move my, my hard edge just to follow my contour line. It kind of gives me a real strong, tough line without, without it being too, too, too geometric, too, too hard edge. I know that sounds a little ironic. Or contradictory, actually. Then here I won't, because we're going to build in a little curve up and through here and over. Okay, so now we're working. All right, so let's work in through here. So we know that this value here, if we look over here, is about the same. It's really pretty dark in this little area, like in through here to here. So these sevens and eights on the value scale are in there. So let's start there. Just kind of dig in there with your pencil. That's why I like to leave my triangle down there. And I've got it, I've got it, part of my finger, it's pulled up off the paper so I don't hit the paper with it. <clears throat> We're just going to build this value up, up and up and up, higher, darker, but build it slowly. Don't, don't develop your darks too dark too quick. They don't look very good if you do that. It builds up too much value too quickly surface-wise. And then number two is that you might want to ease into it so you can get more accurate as opposed to trying to have to erase back. It's harder that way. So ease into it. It's like anything you're learning, ease into it. Okay. There we go. Okay. Do So we're getting pretty close to where I want it there. Now we can fade out a little bit, ease off. We get darker in that cross. It's not absolutely dark, but it's dark. <clears throat> it's deeper in there, but it's really not as dark as the darkest part of the, of the wall. And I'll, I'll alter some of that too anyway, <clears throat> to make it a little bit more lively when we get to, to the finish of the background. <clears throat> A little bit of a curve fold in through here. You can just make it out. Remember, I've got this image, a higher uh, image in the back of the video, so you can screenshot that and print it out or leave it on however you're drawing. Use it that way. A little curve there and through here. Being careful not to make any hard edges. 
any tight kind of edges in this softness and through here. And if you're not, I might take my eraser and ease off a little bit here just to bring it out. Now it's going to take too much of it off and we can tone back down a little bit too. How about that? It makes it pretty easy just to lighten up. See how I made that a little darker than I wanted? Just ease off on that. See how I just dab at it. It lightens it up just a little. It's subtle. It's subtle and do here, but you should be able to probably tell. <clears throat> Hopefully. this edge, keeping it hard edged, feeling pretty good in through here. A little more of a crevasse in through here. And then we're coming up to where this little area was before. And so it's definitely going to take some erasing out to get that the way I want it. Okay, so it's right in through here. There's a little creasing here. So now we can take that, soften this up a little bit there, but right in through here. Do you see that? Where it's got that little lighter fold. Now we can go dig that out a little bit. I'm taking my kneaded eraser since it's already pretty soft. And it's actually going to be a little bit more hard edged in there. So I can draw around it. Okay. It's got that little dark area here, and it's got kind of a cast shadow line edge on it. <clears throat> okay. Here. I can do there a little bit. Okay. Just trap it around it, right? See, it's a little darker in through here. That's it. There we go, and around. And up and over. See how it emerges out a little bit, like so. Got a little bit darker through here now. Get it really accurate. See how you can you can do that additively and subtractively and it helps. Gives you that little folding in there. dark a little bit. There we go. That's it. So we've got that little little kind of lip in there. Inside this region region here to, to work with. Okay. So now what I'm going to do now is go over to this section. Okay. Now it's going to be much darker, isn't it? So now I can move over here <clears throat> and we can start playing off this and tone this down so I'm getting it closer to the lightest of the darker values roughly just kind of glaze it down here I 
like so. So let's dig in there deeper now and see what we've got going. Okay. <clears throat> right, so we'll just tighten up this beginning, this area here. Tightening up that edge. It's close to the value that we want. Right in through here. Tightening through, cutting that edge. Right there. Right there. Then we have a secondary kind of folding. Because it's rolling in there, right? Right about in here, through here, that's where that darker area will be. In through here. Okay. So you can see it start to emerge, right? You can see it start to come out. Then it gets, it gets deeper and bigger. As this one fades down, this one comes out longer. Deeper. Kind of that, toward that little bump is right in through there. There we go. Like that. Then it starts to stop with that extra creases right through there. Really lots of degrees of slight value changes and edge changes make this work. You've got to be able to think in 3D for it. As that dark congregates in there a little. That's what makes that fascinating, I think. If not, you're probably not going to want to draw it. <clears throat> Down, turn a little bit darker around it, and soften it up a little bit is will darken in the lightest of areas. Come at, it, come at it through here a little bit. I'm going to bring it out just a little further here. I'll take my needed eraser to do that. <clears throat> right up in through this area. There we go. Right in through there. Kind of meet, meets up and through. And I might lighten this up just a bit to define it further and then take it down to darkness again. <clears throat> just to soften it up even further. It tends to go a little bit all the way more to the edge here. There we go. Like that. Okay. Bring that out around. It feels better. And we'll just soften this out by slightly going back over to darken just barely. There we go. Now we can take those edges here, <laughs> tighten those up even further. By just kicking that line in there. We don't want to overdo the line. We just want to, it's like cutting into it, really cutting tight to the line. Just ease off that line. And through here, and we got that bump of the cloth a little bit. And it cascades gracefully back on down. To where that knot is, or gonna be, beginning. Haku size, I'm gonna call that Haku size knot. Start to get in there and render up that darkest value in the corner. 
pretty dark right in that deep corner. And it fades out pretty quick. <clears throat> We're fading that out, going a little darker as we do that, and then getting up to what will be that little bitty folded area. Right in through here, so drawing around it rather than drawing on it. Kind of curved. It's darkest there. And then back, it's kind of like a little sausage fold in there, just a little something to look at that we can see in there. You just have to be soft and subtle with your values. You have to be able to see it first. And this will, line will get cut in a little bit. Cut in that line, cut in that line. So I'm going to lighten it up just a little to catch it, bring it out, and I can take it back, push it back when I need to. <clears throat> okay. All right, so see how it's a little lighter than what it needs to be. We can take that out. I'm just going to lighten this one up just a touch, just to bring it out a little bit more than what it is. That's what I do there, just because I can. So that's feeling pretty good. And then <clears throat> now I want to close it off a little bit on this side, just a little, taking great pains to not get any strong edges or darker, too dark a value. And just take it down a little bit. Right through there. And that should just about do it. Right in through there. It's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to take my medium mono eraser here and I'm going to butt this edge on this side and I'm going to lighten this lip up just a little bit just so we can see it. So it catches the line a little, a little stronger. Now I use that edge so I don't go too far on the outside. It helps me dig in there too as well. Really good little, good little tool. tool. Through there, and pretty much all the way down. So that picks that up. You can see that on camera. And then I can come back behind it on the darker side and catch that real sharp edge. Right there. Kind of all the way through and down. <clears throat> Mirror's a little darker. Come on through and over. And that seems to work pretty well. Right in through there. Push that edge. Seems pretty good to go. Erase this little extra line off for now. There we go. And so that it helps you that Japanese mono eraser is really nice to dig into those little tiny areas where you need subtle softness of light coming through. All right, so you notice what we've got. We're starting to trap the light areas with the Oreo cookie. Remember that concept, if you will, with dark, dark against the light. This will help us be able to relate this value in the middle pretty well. So why don't we uh, go for that area uh, too as well. I think I'm going to sharpen my pencil while we're while we're talking a little bit, slow it down. So, I mean, you could go at it from a number of different ways. You could work this next or this next, but since this is already laid in, that starts to trap this area, I thought that might be a good place for me to 
begin to work that area. And so you have something to respond against or contrast with your eye when you're working. So that's why we've already laid in a good amount of the beginning background. You want to get it all out there as quick as you can so that you can see it all and relate it all together to make better decisions. It's like, you know, getting quite a bit of information together to make accurate decisions. Okay. Sharpen that out a little bit. I just use a blade like that to sharpen. It's a little dangerous if you're not used to it uh, as well. Okay, so let's work on that. So now we're going to work on this middle section underneath this little squid head, if, if you will. That's, the squid head is fairly done. It's got some uh, minor tweaks and changes we'll get to, but it's close to being done. So let's work now. So I'll start here underneath a little bit. What we've got here a little bit and getting into that fold there, that middle section that's a little darker and through there, which means this top pleat, pleated area is gonna be a little darker. Right there, around the edge. Just a touch and also in that divot, just a little bit in that divot. There we go. Alright, so this will help us find these rolls that we want as they're beginning to come upward and pitch upward here. We see the next one there, so I can kind of delineate with just a uh, cutting in line where I want to start here to here. Okay, and you see how that's going to help me catch the tone against it a little bit better. It's a medium dark value through here. All that. Now there's another fold that's going to start too as well. Coming on down. Then it starts to open up a little bit, doesn't it? Right in through here. That's where it opens up a little bit further. Downward coming through and over. <clears throat> and over here to this area, which is a coarse shadow, and it's got a really light, reflective light, kind of a line almost to separate a fold. Pretty complex little arrangement. Probably drawing the figure and then drapery are the two two hardest things you'll do in drawing besides coming up with great ideas that's always number one the hardest it never gets any easier good idea making Jasper John says that it of all the things that that um, he's accomplished in his long and storied career I read somewhere I forget it never got any easier to produce really good ideas. And he had some of the greatest ideas in, in painting, process and painting, that the art world has seen starting from the early 50s onward. He was in his middle 20s. He's still producing in his middle 80s. One of my favorite, favorite artists. And I'll talk about him when I get to the... Uh, Art History and Drawing series. Through here. So, gonna come back over here and touch this little edge a little bit so you get to see how I do all of this. It's just, there's no right or wrong way, there's just effective ways, and that's what we're looking for. Now, to catch that edge really strongly, too, I'm gonna take my mono eraser now and come back and clean that out because it's pretty bright and I can always tone it down which I'm sure I'll have to but it's got a pretty hard edge there it's a fold and it's turning very strongly up and around and underneath and through and that's why it has that kind of edge there should be using my brush more there we go shame on me okay. <clears throat> 
So this cuts in and comes through and downward and over. And you can see where I can cut back this line on the other side like we did earlier. See how it gives that even stronger line? Because later on I've got a little reflected light past that cast shadow. Do you see it where I'm drawing now? It's pretty strong there. So now I can define a little bit better where I've got these folds. See what's well. Because these are much more subtle value shifts. There's, there's some more contrast in here, but there's more contrast here. But when you get value to value, the level of contrast reduces as it does in these subtle areas. That's still contrast, by the way. It doesn't take extreme contrast to be contrast. Just like the you know, broccoli and cauliflower are different tastes. They have the same kind of shape, but they have a different color, right? And they, and they have a different taste, but they look remarkably similar in their form. But, so that's the subtle contrast. And then you get a greater contrast when you taste them after the color change. So a little bit of subtle value there as that comes down that little harder pleat fold. It disappears and then we pick up a value on this side further that's turning. It's got some folding around going on. So we want to be mindful back of the shape that we put down earlier. It's kind of our record of our first pass, archaeologically speaking. And then we can go and do more here. Getting a little bit dark. We don't go too dark. Probably right in through there is enough. And this kind of has a little lip here, a little curve. And however you want to name those shapes, rectangular, and it's kind of comes down and curves over. Like so. It just takes time. Drawing and painting more traditional ways are very labor intensive. Some artists like that, some artists through their personnel they don't and they make things more gestural. Either way is valid. There are many different approaches. That's what's beautiful about the diversity of art making as well as the diversity of the human experience, ethnicity, and all those beautiful variations of the human experience. Just like the animal world. To me that makes life worth living. I hope you feel the same way too. Most artists generally do. It's a rarity that artists are more intolerant of such, such things. Getting into that edge. See those subtle differences, right? Dark, right? A little bit lighter reflected line and a darker subtle core shadow, but more in the line. It's pretty amazing. All those little variations that occur. <clears throat> so I see a smudge in my drawing. It just helps me get out the drawing. If you want a real soft edge, you dab at it. You just kind of you you dab down on it to subtly lift and also kind of subtly blend as well.
So, see how that we kind of have now that zigzag light area? Okay, it's very generalized, but we're starting to see the values come together a little further. Right, hallelujah. It's slow, isn't it? Now, you could make this a very fast sketch and gesture. You just wouldn't have the level of control and detail, but it could still be powerful, so. So I'm going to start to darken in some of these areas further as we go up the cloth range here. This is kind of a lower point. When we talk pitch and roll, high and low, this is the, the darker areas where it's coming downward and in. It's turning underneath. So we've got to be mindful of what we're doing and what, what we're drawing as we draw um, just value edges and contrast and light. Because if we don't, it's going to probably not look correct if we don't understand the theory in, of what we're drawing and why. why. Why are there darks there? Why are there lights there? It's important. <clears throat> Dig into this little area further. There's artists that work very uh, uh, tight or they work very meticulously. That's a better word. And they'll work in little inches at a time over an entire painting. Even the painting might be loose, but they're very specific about little tiny areas. It's pretty fascinating to, uh, uh, to look them. There's a name of an artist I'm trying to think of, having a senior moment um, that worked that way. And you never would think that looking at his work. Pretty powerful kind of figurative work that these decrepit old, uh, almost decayed figures. I forget his name. Edward something or other, I think. I'll try to remember that one for one of these sessions. Okay, so I'm just going over here and just working through where the darks and lights are, trying to work those shapes, trying to be mindful of what's going on, trying to talk and draw, trying to make it work. Oh, I don't want to go nuts, but I can do it. And through here, glade over, the gloss over that. This comes folding over, this comes up, and then starts to go down the valley of those folds and pleats here. Coming through and then tightening up that little light area, that zigzaggy area, and through here. See how it's a little tightens in. It's a little darker here. A little stronger sort of edge in the left side, then it fades out a little to here. And then downward to there. pick up kind of where Hawkeye's wave is not again look him up you don't know who Hawkeye is you'll recognize his waves once you see that you're like oh okay I know who that is this he's universal that image is as famous as the Mona Lisa probably more so in the eastern world of Japan for sure Just a little bit more through 
here. And loop around. And just coming over and it just want to gradually kind of fade up and over and it gets lighter here and then we catch it again, don't we? Right in right through here and over. Excuse me. Fly through the screen, you see my bald head. That could scare anybody. Right through here and up and over. And so now I'm just picking apart where that darker pleat is, that fold. Pleats are kind of folds. Folding or pleating here. I'm just getting the shape of it. It's the deepest part. It's not getting as much light. It's getting reflected light because it's hidden from it. And through here. Have that where it starts to turn. It's a nice little zigzaggy shape. There's a gesture to it, isn't there? You find that little gesture, little curve. Come through. It's curving around. Right in through that little area, loops down a little bit. Just takes time, but you can see it start to come through, and it can't be done really fast since it's really, really uh, very subtle. You have to just slow it on down and get it on in there. But it's coming through. Yeah, and then we'll fold over, take it. Through here, look, this will be all darker anyway. Subtle, medial, medium values. It's going to come over and through here. And then find that dark little pleating folding here a little bit. So we'll catch that edge a little bit more. I'm not putting a lot of pressure down on the pencil. Um, and I, I work it slowly. Notice I haven't broken a pencil. I'm going to jinx it myself. I haven't broken a pencil in this video yet, which is a rarity. If you've followed the, if you're in YouTube land or one of my students and you've watched a lot of videos, you know that I'm a notorious pencil breaker. Proudly. I wear that flag proudly. But I do, I do break my pencil quite a bit. And it's because I, I've always had a heavier hand. I've learned to really hold off that over the years. When I was a kid, I had a heavy hand. Then I had a professor who I really admired who had a heavy hand, too. He broke his pencil a lot. And so it never really changed. I kind of just gave up about it. So we have that. And through. Now, later on, I can come back with either a kneaded eraser or a mono eraser. And I can... Tighten in those lighter areas. Probably mono is going to be better. Kind of a medium, medium point that I have here. And I can get into those lighter areas and really make them the shape tighter when I need to. Later on. Thereby thus creating a tighter uh, shape of the shadows. They work together. So even in a primarily additive drawing that we're doing, we still have subtractive methodologies, don't we? Here, round, through. Have a nice little white, little plated foot and folds, excuse me, in through there. <clears throat> but the only thing about using the monos, the gen mono erasers, is they generally tend to have a harder edge, so you have to soften them.
So, <clears throat> and this will come out a little longer here, just a little. So we see that coming and emerging. Coming out, so let's go back over to here. The, you know, the really the, the strong anchors of any drawing, more traditional drawing, are going to be those shadow shapes. They're going to anchor everything because they're going to define the light um, quite a bit. That'll help you see, relate to most of your drawing. If you haven't figured it out by now. Make sure you do. That's really important. It's those shadow shapes. They're, you can, you know, they're not flat, but you can think of them as flat and for a while as you just lay them in, and then they have to be core shadowed and they have to have reflected light, mostly. Not always, but mostly. There's always exceptions to certain rules, and that's where we get innovative breaks through art history. So coming up and over, coming down and around, through here. So it's looking pretty good up here. I'll probably overdraw that shadow a little bit so I can define it up at the top and through here. So it just takes a while, doesn't it, to come through. So we're looking pretty good in through here for now. I'm going to draw this core shadow a little stronger. Try to get the the shape of it. It's it's uh, look a little closer to what I need. It's just a basic design problem at this point in time. It, um, it's like what edge is what edge, what value is what value. It's kind of a basic foundational design course. This stage it really is. I'm going to go a little darker here. I don't want to go too dark because it's nothing absolute dark unless it's a deep, 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 tiny little cachet all about like right here where it's absolute dark. No lights getting in there. If you're a little, little tiny insect, you can live in there with no light. It's nighttime in there. <clears throat> All right, so we'll come through here. Here now we're getting closer and through here. Okay. So we've got some decisions to make starting through. It's working pretty well as a beginning beginning pleat fold we've got going. So now I want to come up and really right underneath this area here now with the divots here. It's, it's pretty good in through there. I can't do much more with this. I don't think I want to. Okay. okay. So now we're going to come over and really, this little area where the all the folds come up and they hide behind the little uh, squid head body looking fold. I just kind of name them names. And through here. I'm not going to go for any other little subtle detail in through here. That's enough. It's good there for now. But the hard edge, so there's a hard edge here, right? We want to get that. And then you notice it goes a little darker, about the same length, maybe a little bit less wide to about right uh, there. 
that's going to need a little hard edge right there. Here it is. It's about that dark, not too much darker. And we're going to need a little edge there, but we're also going to need it to be done with the mono eraser right here. It may be a little bit lighter than we need, and the reason why is so I can, I can always tone it back, but it's got to be a little harder edge for that reflected light, because it's tighter turned where I'm drawing right now, then it starts to fold and slope less so, right in through here, and that's why I needed that tighter edge right at the top. And so I'll take more off than I need here, especially at the bottom. See where it's a little lighter. It's too light now, and I can go back and adjust that. But I needed that to blow that off a little bit to get that tight edge. And then what I can do is start bringing this core shadow over to it. But then just as I come to its edge, keep it a little bit lighter so that edge shows. Okay? See how I can... It's that little subtle... Reflected light in there. That's importante. Importante. Para las personas que hablan español. I speak a little Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? Give me a shout out, those those of you from the Latin American Spanish speaking world, both in Spain and all the way over to Central and South America. I've been to both of those. Continents, both Central America and South America. It was beautiful. I look forward to going back one day when there's not a virus. And also when Bolsonaro is not the president of Brazil. Sorry, Brazilians. Of course, I, I'm not a Trump fan either. So This will date this video. I'll look back and I'll say, oh, that's when those two guys were in charge, unfortunately. Okay, I'll get off that subject. Here a little bit. Now this can lighten up coming down a little bit. Watch this. So I'll take my needed eraser. And right in through here, this could go just. I like the shape of it, but it's gonna go a little lighter, so we'll take the needed eraser and dab at it. Just gently take a little off. Like that. There we go. Okay, it helps. Helps in that area. fingers downward, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Maybe a little bit subtle. Lighter through each one. There we go. That's it. Let's take that off a little. Like so. <clears throat> probably one of my favorite artists, painters of all time, would be Velasquez. I think it's probably on everybody's list he is, but also because of his Beautiful sort of impressionistic rendering of folds and drapery um, through the Spanish royal court of that era, 17th century. And um, he was such ahead of his time in painting and loosening, keeping a looser approach. It was almost impressionistic. Um, and it's fascinating to look at those paintings, both live and in reproduction, to see the, the subtle symbol, symbols he used for for drapery that looked up close, very, very, very abstract. And so his painting, paintings have a shimmering kind of out-of-focus quality that um, nobody's ever been able to reproduce. A lot of people have tried. And, um, I wouldn't even try it anymore. It's Velasquez. It's, to me, there's Velasquez, and then you start with them, and you can go onward, but there's so many beautiful, beautiful painters of still living as well as is uh, deceased, male and female. So I'll tone that down a little bit. So this is going pretty well. Now we're going to catch this little dark core shadow up a little bit as it's folding in through here and it has kind of a rhythm of this kind of this direction of my pencil. So it makes it very comfortable to draw. There. Okay. Like this. Okay, then we're going to come over and start to catch this darker pleat, the core shadow of it, 
without running through here. So it's got to go a little darker, but now it's dark next to it. That's even darker in the cast shadowing. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's got that little extra. Just kind of be mindful of the shape that it makes. Put a little rectangle out there. It's about as dark as I want to go. Move my, moving my triangle up. As I move my hand so I don't smear my hand over the page there. Going through. Feels pretty good underneath there as it sits. Feeling pretty good up there. Right in fact, this cascades over now a little bit through. Pretty much the same value. <coughs> Put a little bit more coarse shadow. There's a little reflected line on the left side of this, so be careful. The core shadow doesn't extend all the way to the border or the edge of it, just barely. It's hard to see this. So it's working pretty good there. All right. <clears throat> all right, so let's continue on now in this middle section here. I took a little break. I'm back. Here, no matter where you're at, you can pick this, always kind of pick that up. It's kind of nice about online sort of learning. Okay, so we're coming in now to um, this entire lit area a little bit further. I want to finish it out just a little, a little bit more as we before I move on a little bit. I'm going to kind of contour this way a little. Kind of naturally there. Easy to do that through here. <clears throat> I'm going to go a little bit darker right in through this area. does a couple of things. It um, darkens in that coarse shadow, but it also makes that reflective light a little bit brighter, doesn't it? Too as well. You get two, two for one there. So discounted drawing techniques for the day. There. It looks like it's pretty good through here. All right, so coming over with this dark uh, kind of crease comes over and meets the other one a little bit right in through here. It gets a little bit darker in through here where they meet together. Through there. That's plenty dark, maybe even too dark, but I'll leave it. For now, as we come over, and this is where this is tumbling slightly downward and rolling and flattening out a little bit through here. <clears throat> and coming over and cascading through, and then we get to these little light zigzags of, of uh, pleating and folding. It starts to fade out a little bit in terms of the value right through there. 
Just a little bit darker, not the whole box. Through here. through here so just tightening this a little bit further in this region a little bit darker on this side not by a whole lot not by a whole, whole much of a lot and softly coming in through here <clears throat> Just a little bit darker around that light. Now I can get a little bit darker on the right side of it too as well. There. Kind of work the shape as I see it. Like so. <clears throat> This little area, so we'll get a little darker and through. Not quite as dark as here, is it? When the lighter part of the shadows, so we have to be careful. To be careful there. So all this could be a little darker and through here. And up and over. <clears throat> so again, it's all about relating light, value, edges, and contrast together. Being mindful what is doing what for you. Coming just to add a little bit more thickness to that dark on this side and coming around and over and through here. You know, I get everything as accurate as I see to it. It's not fine minutia of folds. And if you look at the Leonardo's that we looked at earlier in the preparatory videos for this long study, you see that a grand simplification on many levels. You see that in Velasquez, many great Renaissance and Baroque artists, Romanticists as well, Delacroix, Jericho. Coming down in through here, little, little coarse shadow hanging out right in through here. You never, you're never going to stay the same value in a representational, strict representational drawing or painting for very long. There's always going to be a flux of light going on. So you're going to, you're always going to be wavering in and out just a little bit. And this is a little bit darker on that lighter area, so we can't go. We've got to have a little, little tone there on that. Most of the coverage is going to be on the drawing with not much light left on the paper. Keep that in mind. But yes, you're not going to have a lot of values that's going to stay the same. Even in a flat shape, like if you drew a dark piece of paper on a wall, it would still have transitions, just like that dark wall in the background here. It's got quite a bit of transitions. It's not flat because the light's moving all over it. This is pretty powerful. 
once you once you get that. <clears throat> so come over here with a little bit more dark here in this crease. Here. See I'm just gently working it through, being careful, being mindful, watching my edges are mostly softer, little transitions. Here and up, and connecting over here. Up a little bit around. You know these shapes aren't perfectly how I see them in the in the image, but they're they're really close and they're totally satisfactory for me. I'm not going for 100% complete likeness. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not that important, but we're in the real, real close ballpark, especially for studies like this. That makes it, makes it look more like a photograph rather than a drawing. So I think you have to be mindful of that. What, what do you want to do? Is it photorealism or is it draftsmanship? You have to be, that's why we have to study art history. Be careful about that. I think students, young, especially younger students, get confused about that. <clears throat> Soften this up just a little. Right into here. Around this darker area. Soften that through. Strong pleat through. This can go a little darker now here. I'll come back in a moment with some erasing subtractive qualities too as well. Get through. Just going to run this pencil over just to contour just a little. Get it through here. Through down and around, a little bit of a just little shapes, etc. Getting closer and through there. Okay, on this side over, looking pretty good. All right, it's getting close there, isn't it? This might come in just a little bit further. Just a little bit darker, right in through here with the toning. So let's take now the our mono eraser here, probably my medium one. I'll grab a seat here. Most of these drawings I do standing up, by the way. Just easier to see them all. But every so often I'll sit down when I need to. And this is a case for that as we go deep into the, some of the detail of, of what I'm trying to do. And let's go right in through here. I'm just going to dab at this core shape. It needs to soften. That's up that edge is a little hard. So I'm going to soften that. See how it just softens it up, lightens it up, gives it a little bit of a hazier quality to it. Through here. Okay, there. Just going to come back and recapture the soft softness and what that light is. Roll it over a little bit. Bring this out, this little curve. Just takes a while, doesn't it? It takes a while to render these fully to get what you're after. And again, if you're going for photorealism, you could go even 
even minute. You could spend three days running through here. That would, that would kill me. I have to do that. Well, not literally, but you get the idea. Through here. And over. And through here. Okay, pretty good there. A little bit of light coming in there. Just a touch of a roll. It's pretty minor stuff that we're looking at here. You may not even register that much on the on the screen. Okay, right up in here. Just a little lighter. So I'm going to take my Japanese mono eraser here. And get that little flick of light. Kind of a little ray of light in through. Like so. A little shape there, and then come up, there's a little linear kind of flick that I think is worth getting in the drawing. Right there. Just a touch of it right in through there. And I might find a little bit more of a curve coming up. Maybe there's a little light, which I've already got. Just to keep continuity, maybe just a little bit lighting up. All right, see, I keep my hand off my drawing by my triangle there. That helps. Here. So pretty good there. All right, looking pretty good. I think. I hope. All right. Get going. So I think we're pretty much ready to get out. Don't worry about those red lines. It's a sketch. No big deal. I don't. I don't worry about this. I'm not worried about this. Okay. All right. Maybe just a touch of finishing. Down here, just a little bit more. So I don't want to use the tip tip, but I, you know, I'm kind of in a tight spot, so I'm turning it to the side a little bit here. So if I use the tip, that's going to make a really incised line, and I don't want that, but I do want a little bit more. A folding through here. Just a touch more dark around. Build that up slowly through here. Not a whole lot left. And this little area. Hallelujah, right? Inshallah. Okay. Here we go. Curve it on around a little bit of a harder edge, right in through, and I think we're there. All right, so now I want to go on to this section here. So this is pretty finished here. Here are these darks, right? This is laid in. This is kind of pretty finished on this side, but right in through here now, where this folds through, is needs some needs quite a bit of attention, so let's give it that attention that it needs. How about that? Okay. Looks like a, a little baby screaming out for attention, so let's give it some. Okay, so we're going to glaze everything back into more of a dark again. <clears throat> so, we'll fill this through. This is going to come through this way. This little, sh this little dark, and I've got a define this little bottom area. It's kind of like a seashell again. So that shadow coming up and then right in through here. Everything in through here is in shadow. So I'm going to put it all in shadow and then I'll, I'll, I'll get the light part back out and I'll show you why. It's just easier to do it that way. So let's put most of that in, most of it in shadow, not all of it. Here, this is going to be more in shadow and through that region. Okay. There we go. And then coming around, and then we're going to have this guy over, like so. Okay. And then run around and through here, we get this going. And over, this is going to be more shadowed here in the back, right? And then we can throw all of this even darker and shadow this big. This big incised line I've got here, that's where that stronger shadow 
is emerging. We can start to see that emerging a little bit further. <clears throat> okay. Right, so. It's darker in through here as it fades down through. Okay, so. Now I'm going to push these darks, those dark anchored areas, you know, right in through here, especially. We want to go darker with that. It really gets. It's not completely dark. Yeah, there's light, there's still reflected light in there, seeping through, isn't there? So we can't make it absolutely dark. We can't make it as dark. Even just down in through here, just barely, that's where it gets really, 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 really dark, right in that little dot. So we have to be careful there. <clears throat> you know, your, your, your mind is constantly moving and fluttering between uh, two-dimensional and three-dimensional in a drawing, almost all drawings, but especially this type of drawing, especially in this particular area. <clears throat> two-dimensional, you're looking at the shape of the thing you're drawing, you're just kind of naming it to say whatever that is, that kind of rectangular or triangular shape. And then you want to get, okay, what are the edges doing? What is the value doing? Now we're really not using color, but if we had color, you'd have to deal with another complexity and all the complexities that color can can bring in its wonder and its difficulty too as well. And splendor, if you will. So this is a cast shadow, this little disc lip right in through here that's coming from this area. It's being hit, the light's coming from here, and it's casting this over a little, like so, here. I remember I set up these, these, drape, these drapery areas in my office, about three of them. I remember one morning a while ago. And cut, I always forget to do the first pass. said setting these up and then photographing them in my office you know if you're gonna do these if I was gonna do these professionally I would I would work from these from life and you should too once you get through these lessons start start again I've, I've, I've mentioned this a couple of times I think already and maybe this video and another one is you want to start your own practice of, of drawing by setting up objects and such in a way that you can can do your own drawings and renderings from life rather than from online images. That's taking that's what's called taking the next step. And you want to be able to make sure that you're doing you're doing this just that in your studies. That might seem a little scary. It's not, it's really the same thing. Learning to draw three dimensionally is is conceptual ideas, even though you might not be drawing from 3D objects, it helps. But it's, it's a complex set of artistic elements that make that work. So, a lot going on there. Alright, now, coming in through here, right around here, it starts to get a little harder edged, doesn't it? Right around here. It's not completely hard edge like some of this, but it's it's firmer. So we gotta be mindful of that and come over and grab it a little bit. And it pooches out a little there. And then it comes back and almost disappears underneath that folding of the cloth. And through that it gets dark as it hugs against that. Of course there's another one down as it picks back up over over and in through there. 
right? So, we have that. Okay, now I'm going to flip over here. Okay, and it gets thinner. And we're going to have to put, pick up some white here think, to help us out. So let's do that now. So we want to come down here to where it gets to like a shell again. And we're going to take the mono eraser and we're just going to start to just gently take that out. Okay, run into here. It's kind of like a flower. These can be all kinds of things. Okay, and as it's curving through here. Okay. And up. Okay. Right. And this can curve and end about right here. Maybe a little, a little bit higher actually. <clears throat> Always keep, keep your drawing clean. Anytime you see some smudges and you get a chance to clean them out. It's one good thing about working digitally. You don't generally have smudges unless there's a way to do that. And I don't know about, which is okay as well. <clears throat> So this comes up, this little tail comes up and in. Maybe a little bit higher it ends about right. Yeah, right in through there. So what we've done now is we've been able to clean out some of that shadow and then help us out down here where it's going to get water. So we can start to put our core shadow in and start to, to figure out what the heck is going on down with all this good stuff in terms of drawing. Alright, so now we're going to strengthen up the shadow here okay. this area. Okay, make sure my paper's not falling off there. There we go. Falling out of the camera. Alright, so right in through here it gets a little darker, doesn't it? So we want to see that and dig into that a little bit. Like so there. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure because I'm using almost the tip, but kind of the side of it. So I have to be really careful that I don't um, make it too linear as I'm toning. That could be dangerous. Okay, right through here it's coming through. It's kind of a hard edge on the back end of it. So it pleats out and then it opens up again to so get pleats out to this back kind of corner back there and it gets darker underneath it too. It's kind of a cast shadow in here. Later on that's gonna affect the other this other part here. There we go. Alright, so now I'm gonna have to lighten up a little areas around here a little bit later. We'll get that to a moment. Okay, and I'm going to take this. This is a little bit wider too, and through here, isn't it? So we'll take a kneaded eraser. Go a little bit wider. That makes it work better, I think. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going up still because it could be taken, needs to be taken out. I'm going to go for my mono now too and get a little bit more control with it as we come up and I'll soften those edges 
and a little bit using the mono as a harder edge tool. But sometimes I need, even though I want a softer edge, it's just easier to have more control. Then I'll go back and draw additively to get the softer edge that I want. I hope that makes makes a good bit of sense. It does for me. I just hope it I think it does for you guys. YouTube land out there and NKU. Okay. <clears throat> so that was working pretty well. Just thickened up that that light, uh, lighter area on that roll that we needed. Just had to be picked up a little. Back and through. Okay. And then catching it here where there's a little lip of line. We catch that, aren't we? There we go. <clears throat> so it's working pretty well now. We can just, just soften that just a little by glazing over that. It's hard to really read on camera, but just a little bit there, just to soften that edge, just to touch and through. All right, so now the next phase is to where we made this light shape further. There's a core shadow there. Core shadow and almost kind of a cast shadow really too as well right in through uh, here, okay? So it's a coarse shadow, it doesn't have a lot of reflective light, but then this roll is being cast onto this part of the cloth really, really quickly, so it's kind of a cast shadow too. So it's a little harder edged than what you might notice. This is soft, it's kind of simultaneously soft and hard, and then it gets really soft again more. It's the folds, not as deep, and then it just, it's a coarse shadow, but very, very soft, not too dark, coarse shadow. And through here. There we go, a little darker. And what I can do is, is, is lighten that up a little too with my kneaded eraser. I can take that in there in that uh, coarse shadow uh, reflected light, excuse me, area. And just lighten it up a little bit. So it gives it a little bit more contrast. And then right where that other cast shadow from the top is coming. See that? And that's probably too light. And then you can just come back over, just, just gloss over, take it down just a notch. But right in through here, this is a core shadow and kind of a cast shadow together. It's hard to see the the ending of the cloth is so soft. That's why it's a little bit darker there. And this is all cast shadow. And through here. And it just kind of curls inward just a little. I need that edge. It doesn't and then back out again to keep that nice edge clean. <clears throat> This is going to be darker. There we go. And then around and through. About right in there. It's a really awkward area. Pretty fun area, too. With this little curl flip there. And so we've got this little, past it, this little dark area here, and it's kind of an opening, and there's a little crease crevasse in there, like so. Let's see if I can get that in there. There we go. Around. And then we've got a little bit more, don't we? Over and through. This kind of softly goes over. It's a really interesting, odd area for, for, for folding, folding cloth. Softly let it come over, like so. It 
So it's just a darker soft tone, a little bit of reflected light, then kind of a core shadow cave in there. A little point of darkness running through there where it comes together. And then more reflected light that's a little darker in between there. It could go a little darker. And that's, that's probably, well, maybe a little bit darker in this crevasse. And that's enough running through. See there, I want to get a little darker right in through here. Core shadow, just a touch. Not a whole lot as it comes up in through. We fade in, and then we can get over to this darker in between shadow, can't we? There's a little extra up there, a little subdivision. And right see there, it's get a little dark in between there. It's a little toughy. So we're coming through, and this gets a little bit wider. So watch this, and we'll take this, this auto eraser. And this is a little bit wider. This that other area that's in kind of medium light by the re reflected uh, by the cast shadow of the hub running through here. It's a little thicker. And see, so here's an end. So I can bring that back out. Then turn that over like so. And come on down. In all its glory. Okay, we can get over there in a moment. So I'm gonna, right now I'm more interested in the dark next to it, to the left. Right in through here, just a little bit, a little bit darker into this area. Okay. Kind of have to be mindful of shape around it. Then it opens up and gets a little airier, a little darker on this hinges on this edge here. Just to touch you see it. Running right through there. Still pretty good. Pretty good edge running right through. Meticulous, isn't it? It's crazy meticulous. Drop your nuts. Make you want to cry. No crying. No crying in drawing. There we go. And we'll come down a little bit and soften this out a little further. Where that is. The shadow and then the lighter on this side, of course. It's on the lit side. Coming down, I'm going to clean out this with my mono or this kind of red area. I can get that out of the way. It doesn't really bother me, but I'm just clean it out just a little. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so move this down. Soften it up and it's a little darker right in through here. So we can see a difference for sure. Just to kind of shapes and dashes and cylinders and egg forms and all kinds of other little little shapes that you can name and think about. Don't have to worry about it, just draw it. Now, one thing you can do here is you can come over, and it's got a lot of light and dark in it, is go ahead and glaze over all this, although there's some lighter areas, right? Is glaze over middle value here. And then come up, and there's this little white wider area. It's a little darker right in through here. There's kind of a lip, a crease, a, like a like a, a tie, a suit tie. This is a cool crease here. And then right along the edge, it's a little lighter. You see it right there? And I'll have to erase a little bit from to get it. But you can draw this a little darker and then go back with your eraser and erase again out. A little bit of what you need right in through there because there's some darker areas too. Let's see if I can get a little, just a little dot dash here, a little extra folding 
around. Maybe one just there. That's kind of how that works. And then we can take our mono right? So I'll take my small one here. See that little white lip? Right in, right in there. There we go. You just kind of glaze that around, like so. And then some of this can be just picked out a little. Sometimes you don't even need to. If you want it. It works better in charcoal. It's a little softer to pick out, easier to pick out. There we go. Okay. Alright, so we're getting close there. Aren't we? Getting getting closer to what we need. To here. There we go around. This is a little darker here. Just to soften that up. Okay, feeling feeling pretty good there with that. And then now coming over here, we can go a little darker. Just right in through there. And we've got um, just a, some minor pleating in through there, folding out a whole lot. It's kind of like this little area, but I'm not going to do a whole lot. Just kind of gets in the way. But I am going to curve this up, take a little bit more of this off. Dark as it meets against that fold. And now we met up with our other's part, and so we've got a pretty good run running through here. Now we just need to tackle this area, don't we, too, as well. So let's get to that. <clears throat> Coming up, there's this little dark area here. And it pulls this layer. I'm going to bury that just a little bit more. But I'm going to bring it out too because I can make this a little darker up and through here. It's a little darker crevassing. And this is an overlap again, so it's going to get a stronger edge for sure as it comes up. You can use a little bit of line too as well. So next to this the squid shaped head, okay, we want to go where that shadow is. I think I'll, again, I think I'll start actually lower. Run in through here and it go a little darker. It's uh, darker than I thought it was. Run in through here. And let's bring out this little cast shadow a little further. It's, it's got a little, it's a little harder edge because it's a cast shadow. That's a shadow. That's not a broken fabric. Okay, make sure you know, but it, the edge is not so sharp that it's like an outside edge. Be careful of that. It's like right here. Here we go. That's it. There we go. And we'll clean up those, those kind of linear lines a little bit. A moment. All this is really strong in shadow. I keep a look at it so long it looks like it's starting to be a color like a violet, like a purple almost. Can you see that you see that a little bit? Maybe. Maybe not. Start to work pretty well. Maybe just a touch darker. Sometimes when you're working, depending on how you work and your angle, the light source can start to reflect off darker areas. It makes them look lighter than you think or darker. So you have to make sure you get the right view of it when you're drawing. Otherwise it can mess with your, your drawing and your vision a little bit. So this could probably be a little darker. Just gently, we'll take the side now of my pencil. It's kind of a soft triangle coming down, like so. 
gives you a chance to refine things, and this is going to be a little bit darker and wider coming down. And there we go. Just to help. You can make those adjustments really, really, really quickly in drawing. In painting, it takes takes a lot longer. So we're running through here now, this fold, right past the disc here, okay? And I might have put that a little low, it's, it's fine the way it is, maybe just a touch. Um, this is a kind of a, a separation, but it's a soft, slightly softer edge than the harder edges that we've seen, but it's, it's a little bit more definitive. So it's a, it's a slight soft but hard edge, and that sounds ironic, ironical, to be ironic. come over so see how I'm defining that through and then coming back up and through here and in as we come back and so we lose some of that squid there right okay so you just kind of name it name squid hokusai hokusai wave, whatever you need to to make it work for you. Running through here. And this starts to get defined here and there's a little bit of a thinness, thinner quality right there. Don't be afraid to change them as much as you can. You've seen me change drawings when I needed to. It's okay here. Okay, and then coming around. So now we have back down here, beyond lower. Okay, here we have this, and I'm going to change this core shadow. So I'm going to take this out. Just going to rub it a little bit. That lightens it up. But that dark area, um, I'm, I'm going to glaze it back with my with my pencil. You can just kind of rub over it and not have to worry about the other area. So this takes it down. And then this, the shadow right here runs in the top. See that? I had it too far over. Let's bring it over to the left. Not quite as strong. Strong there. There we go. Like so. And we'll come around like that. There we go. And so we can see it hang out here and see how it's too too thick on this side. So let's let's run some of it here and over. There we go. That's it. And this is all a little too light, isn't it? So we can pull that down. In terms of darkness, okay. Now, trick is, and then I gotta go back with my eraser, and my needed eraser here, I'm gonna, kind of like what I did up here, I'm gonna take it and just lighten everything up. Okay, now that's too light, but so we can come back. I want to add that dark little core shadow right in here. Okay. And through. Just be mindful that it's turning, even though I'm working it kind of vertically. 
it's still, if the value works, it's going to turn some right through here. There, that's where it needs to be. Soft edged enough. Okay, and then we're just going to slightly glaze over that to soften and darken it a little bit further. Even though it's lighter than what's underneath here. And this could go a little, a little harder edge. Bossing through. Not too hard. That's probably enough. There's lots of little subtle changes going on. That feels pretty good there. Then we come down here in this area. Okay. Come in around. And then where this gets folded up and in. thins out and disappears a little bit with this little end. It's basically the end of the sheet. It's like a bed sheet. I keep saying drapery, but it's kind of a bed sheet. There we go. Anything that's draped over something else, I guess, can be drapery, I suppose. Why not, right? And that concludes, I think, that area. I'm pretty solidly okay with it. Maybe a little bit darker here. So that this Reflected line can come out under under right in through there just to make that definition. There we go. A little bit more dark, just a touch. And I think we've got what we need out of that. Now the next phase. Now this is feeling nice and and pretty re fairly resolved in through here, so not much else I want to do with it. As I keep, as I keep drawing on it, right? That's terrible. Um, I think I'm done. So all this seems finished, right in through here. here. Now we're going to tackle this area, this big wide area. Okay, and then we'll come over, I'll call this the Great Western Knot. Since it's or eastern knot actually, it's on the east, north, south, east, west. This is the great western knot. This will be the, the peak, the western knot, the squid, um, hawk-sized wave, and this will be the eastern um, eastern mountain, eastern peak, eastern peak, northern peak, the great uh, western peak, the great uh, eastern knot, and then hawk-sized wave. <laughs> if you're not thoroughly confused by now. Let me confuse you more, okay? There we go. All right, so let's let's tackle this area in the Great Eastern Knot next. All right, so here we are now back with our next phase. So uh, we're going to tackle this area. I'm going to call this the Eastern Plains in our Eastern, Far Eastern Knot here on this little phase here. Okay, so let's jump into it. We're going to handle these two the same way we've handled um, these by breaking down now and finding since we've separated very generally the light side from the dark side right now we're going to go and be more specific about finding those dark shadow shapes and then start to delineate further from differences and edges so we can get the pitch and the roll high coming high and then down low again and we can find our core shadow so we're going to anchor always for the most part, always anchor your drawing with those with those darks. So let's jump in there and see what we can accomplish together. So I'm going to start here I mean, where that little uh, cr crease is, a little stronger than maybe what I have it for now. We can hit some contrast later here. So here, okay, there's a strong core shadow right in through this area. Kind of see how it turns. It just wants to turn that, so I'm just going to use that movement and rhythm to uh, get the idea of turn. It's kind of done for you, and this kind of comes over the top of it. Just gently, we'll glaze over that like so. It's a little bit, a little bit darker than when I had it, and then we'll come over. Okay, so this turns, so you can get a nice contouring with your stroking pattern. I could here, but it's so minimal that it's not as important for me at least, coming around through diagonally with that core shadow. And then that core shadow runs into a crease, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Right here, through here. Okay, and 
right in through there. So we're going to now soften a little that coarse shadow. Right in through there. Bring the shadow down. It's all about finding the shape and the edge. And then adjusting the value to those contrasts for all of them. <clears throat> Coming around and over. Okay. And down and through. We'll go a little further here. Like so. Down. Crease this a little bit. It gets a little crease, kind of a point. So it wants to roll around that fold a little further. And we've got a little bit of just subtle, darker than what you might think. Running through there. You know, where later on I can, in a moment, just retouch that and make it even better, stronger. Running through here. So this wants to turn. And soften this turn as it comes around and over. Okay, a little crease right in through here. I can barely see it, but it's there. <clears throat> Okay, coming over, and it's kind of laid in for now over here, very general sense. We'll get that a little bit later, probably more with the knot there. <clears throat> coming down, I went across this knot, coming through, and I want to come back up a little bit. Through here. <clears throat> So there was no real rhyme or reason where I started in through here. I just thought it would be easier to hear than come up through to make it a little bit easier to get to those separations up in through here. But you could have started up there. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, as much as what you might you might might be thinking. Here. A little bit darker. We'll see where that turns. Now it's getting a little harder edge where there's a crisper turn in through here. Okay, and then coming around, over. <clears throat> you know, you won't have to think as hard. You do this more often, you draw more often, and you start to get better, you don't think as hard. I'm just trying to give my thinking to you out loud of what I just do naturally now. I don't think this way in my head. I don't narrate to myself, but um, I'm, it's kind of all subconsciously built over years of of practicing the arts and being a professional artist. Cut into that a little bit and over. Okay. Through. There we go. And then we're going to take these down a little bit darker. It's soft. This area is getting close to being kind of almost done through here. Coming on the back side. So pretty much just bring this dark up just a little bit here. And there, that's looking pretty good there, pretty strong. Okay, a little softer here. A little softer here. This little triangle. You can see that here. And around. And I'll get to that in a moment. I want to come back here a little bit. Don't want to leave that hanging too much through. Okay, and over. Okay, and then we're going to come over and down through here. And around. See, that's a little lighter through there. So I'm setting up kind of an edge where I'm going to put a little go a little dark, just a little darker here, not much, but certainly where it's darker and it's turning in there, it's got that secondary fold. And we can start to dig in through there, can't we? <clears throat> through here, and up and through. Now we'll start to pour on the dark a little bit, gently, but we'll start to get darker in there. Okay. Okay, through here. There we go. 
So we can start to hit this core shadow too as we come up. The apex of the turn here. Tight. Increasing out and over. We're going to come up here. Grab through and it starts to come up and over further and get wider and larger. It's turning. Remember, it's folding over. It's a high pitch up high. Later on, it'll roll and then come back over again, too, as well. So, there's a lot going on there. So, those core shadows will help you begin to separate. We'll just gently lay them in further as we've been going through this. <clears throat> you have to really kind of be mindful of where you're at with all this, all this material. But you can do it. We've already done some part of it already, right? Okay. <clears throat> then coming through here. <clears throat> and over. Okay. So we've got a little bit of this back side. It's a little bit lighter where that dark is. So be careful on through there. We don't want it to go too dark too quick. <clears throat> Okay. It's kind of a teardrop shape. Long one, I suppose, actually. Maybe not quite as teardrop as I thought. Alright, so we're just going to gently start to lay this darker. Get that separation in there. About to right here where my, my pencil is in my thinking. There we go. <clears throat> So I kind of found the borders of it, top and bottom, left and right around it, I suppose. And so I can come in here and now uh, gradually start to analyze the values and forms inside of it. Shapes inside of it, forms inside of it. And start to get more um, complete with it. You can see it start to merge. This is turning. So a little harder edge in that little foe, but not too hard, right? And then over. So it cascades and it's a little lighter. It's deep as dark as that, that whole area is about right here, isn't it? So let's go for that next. Start to lay that in. It's kind of deep and dark right in through there. There we go. So you can see its core, where it sits in the valley, that's the, the lowest part in this fold, quite a bit in through here. And it's not quite as dark as it is even right in through here, so I can darken this one. See how I can adjust this one as I look at this one, and that helps. Just a little darker, just a little more. Just a little. <clears throat> It's a softer, which means it's darker too. To soften it up. Through there. And around. And through there. Lighten it up a little bit as it's rolling under and then it's starting to come up over. So this whole system is over, under, and back over again. Pretty powerful. Pretty powerful in there. There we go. Curving in through here. Curving up and over and through to a bit, little bit more of a point. Take my tip. After a while, you turn your pencil to the side long enough and it sharpens. See how sharp my tip is? It sharpens the tip. So you can self sharpen. Probably a lot of you didn't know that. If you haven't really talked about it. 
but you can self sharpen that way. <clears throat> so coming down through here a little bit, this would be a little softer later. Maybe I have to take a little bit of the kneaded eraser for this part from my drawing. Okay, so I'm coming up here, finding that deeper dark area. Running through here where I think it's going to be the darkest. Right through there. It's really soft all up through here. Soft edges in between and around. Softer in through this turn, very milky in here. Kind of soft grays and values. Soft through, turning this. Just relating everything together because this will be a fold where it catches and gathers running through here. Some bed spread sheet that we're using as drapery. Could be a curtain or washcloth, anything. Right there is where it's. Kind of harder edge right through there and over kind of right there and then it picks up here <clears throat> just setting some edges that'll soften up a little bit later that comes over doesn't it and then kind of here and then downward all the way kind of to the edge which helps me set this in stronger a stronger value against the light over here so it makes this edge seem harder than it is. It's still fairly soft, but it's crisp-ish. Through here, just kind of quiet there, working, just defining and working, <clears throat> defining those a little bit further than I had before. <clears throat> it's slow going, isn't it? To get it accurate to where you want, keep it slow, keep it <clears throat> gradual. You can turn this into a nice study. Through here, I'm going to take up this. And this cascades into a softer, from the coarse shadow to darker form shadow, which is different from the core shadow, always. And then through here, and we'll delineate that further. And through here, as we soften and go along, sing our drawing song here, if you will. through there, <clears throat> which helps ultimately pick that up a little bit. <clears throat> Just adding a little bit more dark to that, so I can see it evolve through. Sometimes I'll go this way, sometimes I'll go long ways. So going in different directions, long ways like that, and also across just to get that to roll and turn, that feel of that. You can see it right in through here. It helps that stroking pattern it is important. Okay. Let's 
tips through and over. And I'm going to take all this back just a little bit at a time. It's pretty hot, the, the image. It means that it's a little probably too bleached out. Take that down just a touch for now. I can alter it later. <clears throat> Coming through where I feel like creases about running through there. I'll have to erase that around it to get that nice little light creasing. Make it really kind of pop. I'll get that later. Okay. Through here a little bit further, a little bit darker, and through here. So I make my way up, slow going. I can feel your impatience a little bit. Now I'm teasing. I, it is slow going. <clears throat> that's that's the way you have to craft it. Unless you want a different type of look for your drawing, like a very very quick sketch, then you go faster, and that's okay too. It's a good thing too different kind of finish approach for different reasons why you do that. <clears throat> okay, up to here. Just softening and working that fold here where it's reflected light, where I put the dark in, the, in this left side and then the other side it's, it's coarse shadow. It's a very different kind of light analysis that we're getting. Just do you want to be able to know that? Why? Here. And I'm going to put this little edge to make it just a little cleaner for me to do that. I don't want it too hard edge. I just put it down there to give me some guide. And I take it off because I don't want it to be a creasing hard edge, but it helps. Mm -hmm. Soften this down. <clears throat> and we'll come back and get darkened through here. Right in through here is a nice little coarse shadow. It separates a little. This edge pretty soft right in through here just to get that folding shadow to turn in there. There we go. And we're starting to read further, getting it to read and getting it, getting it to look like all the parts are coming together. That's what I mean by reading it. Like you read an image, it's a little bit different than the way you read a book, but it's the same kind of an idea where it gives you a clear picture of when all the elements are there okay, are there together you can read read your image clean clean and clearly so coming up here in around we're going to follow this dark up for a while adding our next layer of kind of internal coarse shadow dark right where I'm putting it now here and to meet up where we had it before it's just nice and we can do that and through here, and into there. Okay. And come up with its thickness, very similar value in there. With its thickness about running through here, and it's going to define that reflected line right to the right of it in that fold. It's important to get for now. <clears throat> Okay, coming over. Through here, just work that little crease in there a little bit. A little bit stronger. So we come over here. This darkest part is through here. I'm kind of tuning, tuning it here and then coming up just a little bit. And it starts to come off the turn a little bit. Up. Pitching higher, so I'm going to soften that a little bit further. Okay, right in through here. <clears throat> so a little bit, almost a highlight right in the 
middle to the left a little bit, but it's not quite as bright as the hottest highlights. And through here, downward. And we can start to get this creasing here. Very general sense, and I can tighten that up a little, just a little later. Creasing right up in through here. And over back where we started earlier, just to get a feel and touch for that. Can a little soften this up a little still. <clears throat> Okay, so coming back in this area, soften this further, down, cover, cover that a little bit more with value, and I can always lighten it up with my kneaded eraser. These will be little points I'll get to. And on this other side, as we come over, so this tip, this reads now a little bit could get just a little bit darker on some of these little edges. So curls and turns in. A little bit further, we can go just a little bit darker in there. We want that. Okay. <clears throat> now we can come over to next to it, right kind of right where the Squid head is. I'm going to sit down for this so I can see this really good. Kind of right where we call this little squid head. Right in through here, I'm going to go downward. And that's form shadow. Right in through here. It's not, it doesn't linger. It's getting so much light that it's reflecting off the core shadow. It's not getting any core shadow enough. But it, it especially right in through here, as we come down, if you look hard enough, you've got to look pretty hard. Right in through here, and it's a little darker, and you get, get a little darker, and you get next to the left is the reflected line. And then to the right is some more form shadow there. Right in through there as it starts. So you can pull that down gradually. And see how we meet up here on this side. See how it gets darker, which makes this little dark area next to it, in between, like an Oreo cookie, read as more reflective light. <clears throat> That didn't just magically come together. I knew that was we had to do that, so we're setting that up. Here and coming over. <clears throat> and then around this is gathering and then pulling over and it gets gathered up and all this little pleated, the end of that sheet kind of mess. And so we'll simplify this for now. Kind of right as it turns right in through here. And there we are, OK. 
hemming over and getting a little pleated. Just simplifying that in through there to get all that for now. All right, all on period. And so I'm gonna go, this tells me to go just a little bit darker, doesn't it? Running through. Here I can go one step darker. What I mean by step, I'm just kind of glazing over the dark just to push a little bit more. So I lined it up earlier, but I had to, you know, I have to adjust it just a bit. And that's why you don't know what you are going to have to adjust until you get all the parts together. And that's why you, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle in a way, but you want to make sure that you're relating parts together and not just separately. Otherwise, your drawing is going to look very fragmented and chaotic. You ask yourself, why, why am I not seeing some of this? That's probably why. A little bit there. You have to see it all together. There's a little cast shadow right on this side, believe it or not, right here being cast from this over because the light's on the, the far right, isn't it? Running through there. There we go. And so just a little touch of that little, uh, cast shadow light right in through. It's very unusual to see that there, but it's there. Maybe it's unusual, I'm not necessarily sure. It doesn't have to be unusual. <clears throat> So coming through here, softening that back up across, and then I have to soften the left side where that core shadow is, and soften on the right side a little bit, and then let it go to, to more light. But you have to soften that just enough. And then I can come over here, I can see where the deepest dark is, about right here, where it's kind of the, the bottom where the bottom starts, like of an ocean or something. Right in through with that little darker, darkest area. It's not very, it's not a hard edge, it's a little darker. So you gotta get that in there. You gotta make that read like that just a little as we come through. There. So I'm gonna take this light down just a little bit here. This lightest area, just a touch for now. And if I feel like it's too light, I can go back and adjust it there. So see how we pulled apart. Not so much a core shadow from the squid tip here, the squid head. Right in through here, and I can bring this value up. See that? So now we can come over. And I'll work against this edge here, and, and as it comes through, we can begin to see... Can I? Let's see. Okay, there it goes. I lost it for a second. A little edge of darkness. Right in through here and up and through, and there we are. And we found it. This gets turned back a little bit because the dark next to it, right in through here, is, is pretty good and dark. Be good and darker value. Up and right about in through there. So I'm gonna darken this little area just a touch. It's easy to go back and drawing and do the painting. It's you gotta, you gotta stop, mix a different color. Different value, it takes us, this takes longer for this kind of techniques. Here we go. Okay, alright, so feeling pretty good about that now. Right up in through here and over. And we're coming through darker, 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 a little bit thicker. Right, thicker than this little area, so this can come back down a little bit. So it's a little bit too thick, so I can take this down just a little bit. Get it closer to what we're analyzing from. And through there, there we go. It takes that down nicely. Which is the undergirding, right, of our form our fold that we're working on now and in this, this big plains section of our geography, I suppose. Right in through here. 
Gonna tone that down a little bit further. Come over with it. Find where this darker little pleat ends. Catch this edge and then find where our next one is. It's kind of right here, isn't it? Looks to be kind of lighter in value and it's curved like a little point. I think these are important to get, so I'm going to get this. Right in through here, a little kind of a triangular tip and they work with the light, kind of like shark's teeth, aren't they? This kind of light little, little triangular pleats of uh, folding that just happened that way. I don't think there's any shark's teeth in this cloth bedspread. Looks like that better not be. A little scary. This little dark area. See how it gets nice and rich in there. But we had to build that up over time, didn't we? You can't just get it in one shot. You could, but it doesn't look as good. So you have to be careful and you have to kind of learn that. And you have to be shown that and be taught to, for the most part, there's always exceptions to the rule, but you want to build up your darker values. And this type of um, academic, traditional rendered, you know, drawing analysis you want to build up those darks over time you don't want to get to them too quick because it just doesn't look as aesthetically good this whole, the idea that surface quality is an important attribute in drawing is alive and well meaning that the surface that you wind up with or utilize in your work of art is as or can be as important as other elements of expression and then there's, there's drawings and paintings that just deal with surface on its own, probably more or less in an abstract way or kind of a processed way. And then through, and then coming, coming down in on that curve, it's a lot of junk in there to simplify a little bit. We don't need to get all that. We don't need to see all that. It's boring. For now, for our purpose. Later on, if you're a photo realist, yeah, get in there. Get in there with a micro microscope or a um, a lens of some sort, reading glasses, whatever it takes, and get the get the extra detail. I'm not a photo realist, <clears throat> and I find I'll find that process very rewarding. But others can. And this will lead you. These processes that I'm teaching with the drawing database are part and parcel for photorealist to you just go further with a minutia like you might spend three days in this little tunnel corner to me that sounds like you know, just awful but not for everybody and I say go for it that's what you want go for it alright so now we're going to take this little curve here this soft little pleating curve and build that up a little darker Horse shadow where I'm drawing right now. It's a little darker on that lipped edge. And then it comes in and gets reflected light. Lightens up just a little, not a whole lot, but a little. Right on this tip here. And coming through. And downward. And over. And around. And so we get this little head curvature where it really kind of ends, comes into the other folding right in through. Here it gets a little darker. You have to just ease into it. Can't be too hard of an edge. To keep it soft. Right in through there. And go. Soften that in a little bit. So continuing to soften. So this is coming together this, this area pretty well. Just these little tipped edges are just a little hard of these little pleated kind of triangular tooth, teeth, if you will. So let's soften these out just a little by just going over them, their edges, and just softening up just a little. 
makes it better. And I'm going to group all this shadow down and through together and just take that into a value through here. <clears throat> Turning in through this area to pick apart. It's kind of a this is this section is kind of a pre precursor on texture, getting texture. It's the same idea, but we'll we'll spend some time on it separately. And coming up and cascading over. There's a little kind of a little cast shadow running through there, but a little darker just kind of fades. Doesn't really get hard edged much. Then it's a little darker through, running through here. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> okay. So we'll pull this out and go darker, running through this little valley. Where it's the darkest running through here, it looks like. There we go. Okay. So now I want to soften right in through here a little bit. Probably good by going a little darker than I want. And I'll lighten that up just to soften it. The edge. And then I can pull that out if I need to go a little lighter by again the needed eraser <clears throat> and just kind of dab at this and soften this up a little bit. On the edges to dab that where the light needs to darken those sharp, those sharp teeth kind of shapes and then along the light and through here just barely taking off dabbing. It kind of gives it a little bit of a um, diffused look that we need for our turning of our form. through there. <clears throat> and then coming through here. It's a little bit of a darker, a little slightly hard edge running through here. Okay. There we go. Looks looking pretty good there. I'm going to catch these edges down and through. Maybe with a little bit of a uh, mono eraser. Could take that, make that just a little sharper edge by erasing a little bit right through here. Catching that edge, catching that edge. Just a touch, very subtle. Very subtle in there. Okay, it's looking pretty good in there. <clears throat> okay. Alright, so now let's work this little area here. Coming on through, so we're softening up the folds here. I've simplified this quite a bit through here. And then we'll work this curve in through here. Okay, so digging through this area, it's got some curves and some bumps to it, and I'm going to put it all on a little bit of shadow. It's about the same value as what's underneath it and behind it is and it's very very close in value so we're just going to take it all down to about that value for now and then we'll separate out just a little bit but you look i mean it's it's hard to tell a little bit because it's the same value you've got a little bit of a stronger edge there to get through and then if we want we can pick a few white areas back out lighten that up a little bit just to make it turn a little bit uh, further Okay, and through here, we're going to come over, <clears throat> so we've turned, and down and pleat it in, and then we're going to turn this now this way, it's kind of a double little little flip here and then it gets a little bit lighter and then it gets this little hard flip here little core, extra core shadow and then another one right in through here 
where it gets that nice little strong crease, kind of like that I'll get to when we get over there later. Right in through there. Okay. Just turn that in darker and keep that simple. And do there. And we'll come across. Now we're rolling around here. And through. There we go. There's a little crease now. See it right in through here? And the reason why is it's a little darker along this little lipped edge. And that kind of comes all the way over to here since it's turning. Like so. From there. <clears throat> and then it moves over to here underneath this area. So this dark gets extended a little bit more coming out here. See, this is just turning, turning, turning around, turning underneath and go into this darker area. And through here, and over. Okay. Just obeying what I see and what I know, combining the two to get this to work in the drawing. That's why it's working out. It just takes a while. These are techniques we've been using for over 600 years. <clears throat> We're just kind of a part of it. These will stay the same and New techniques will come along and new ways of looking and seeing it. All right, we'll continue. That's what keeps us going, I think. Here, this little crevasse. A little harder edge there. I can soften that up when I need it later. It's very subtle in here. Just digging this out just a little bit. Right in through there, there we go. Okay. okay. Coming back over on the other side now, coming through here. Okay, and over. We'll get into this darker shape, the shadow shape even further now. Continue to evolve it around. Okay. Like so and over. Gets this little crease in there that'll have to be partly erased out. Through it up and over, and a lot of dark through there, just a little bit on the back side of that. Coming over. <clears throat> kind of underneath the underfold of that same pleat that's over here, the, kind of the gathering at the end of it where it's stitched together, so we'll get that a little darker where we need in certain areas. Just to help separate that through. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> it's gonna go a little darker. There we go. Okay, back over here. <clears throat> there we go. through. Okay, and over. So we're getting now this coarse shadow right in through 
here where I'm drawing. <clears throat> okay, right in this area where it separates the lighter side from the darker side. The meat of the shadow and the heavier, fatter part of the form. <clears throat> where it catches the light ends and the shadow again. That's where the coarse shadow is. And through there. Through, just kind of abbreviating some of that. It's not needed. Not that important. This is kind of a ball uh, form, kind of a round form right through here. We're getting <clears throat> simplifying that down. It's kind of just shapes and symbols, isn't it? Trying to make it more 3D. Round a little form in there. And then it comes down. into some cascading in, which is kind of a sub-crease. Gets a little darker, cast shadow and coarse shadow. Bring it together. There we go, so let's work this coarse shadow. And through here, make sure we keep the edge soft. We want to keep that soft as it's turning. Because it almost wants to fold in here, but it just can't quite do it. Do there. So it wants to turn. We're just going to turn, work our pattern this way, and start to turn this in. See where it kind of has a little curl loop? That's what I'm thinking about there. It's going to go a little darker in there. It's got a lot of reflective light up in there. And then this wants to get a little darker and then fold up and turn this way around. That's so all we've got to make that kind of stroking pattern like that. Get this back side a little bit further. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then just defining these little shapes further, these little subfolds in through here, running through. I know it's super tedious. If you're watching and you're not falling asleep, congratulations. It's very good. I might fall asleep just drawing this. You get the idea though. It's important. So I'm just simplifying all of this. See those little ticks and little sub... Um, um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll abbreviate that. That's just not as important. You can simplify things. Let's see here. Coming over, this is kind of like a little shaded hood, cave-like area. A little awning here. through a little flatter under here but getting that shake because now it's turning up and getting higher this is the low point of this under under part believe it or not again uh, I've been saying this for a while this will make you want to cry Ugh, all this tediousness but it's good it's good to keep your shapes and get your forms and your thinking straight it's no different than something big really very, very similar, similar. There we go. Coming in through a little darker on this edge, just a 
touch. So we turn that around. Come over. On through interpreting all this, I want to go one more darker pass on this core shadow and through here. So I can turn it around and turn it. Get it to turn up. Like so here. And through here. A little bit darker. It's working pretty good as we come over and then we find that pleat on this side. So it's working pretty well for us. I think we're getting close to this little area being done. There's a couple things I want to tweak here. Seems to be a little subfold about right under here underneath that. Can you see it? It's tough to see. And it's not really that important, but it kind of brings us over to this little line, this little white lighter area. And it's, it was picked up all the way over here, that's why, just barely. Soften this out to there. <clears throat> okay. Then this little curve can go a little bit further. And I'm going to go darker about right into here where that value really disappears to the other. They're about one of the same. And just make them the same. <clears throat> and through here, this creases down just a little bit more. And over. Okay, down through. A good run on that. All right, let's. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave most of this little detail area there. I'll take it later. So soften this in here. And around, and on our way. Looks like. How do we? Good in that sense and over. So this little area will make a little stronger line weight for now. Bring this down. There's not a whole lot of value here. I want to add a little bit more than I see on both ends just to catch in, uh, some light because the image is burning. The light source is kind of making that a little too bright. Here I'll go a little bit darker. Then underneath I might take out here a little for now. Take that out a little bit further and then catch this edge. It comes over a little bit. This can come through like that and this can gather. It's hard to see because it's and that's why working from life is so important because you could get in there and see here it's a little bit more challenging. I'll go a little bit darker and then we've got a nice little strong crease here that later on goes um, over. I will catch that in another section of the of the video of the process and through there. Okay, that's going pretty well. So let's jump back here and go up further. We still got this to a little bit more, but I think we're pretty good there. I'm gonna make this a little stronger delineation. These darker values are just a little bit. Keep your hand off your drawing if you can. You notice how both my hands on the plastic, not the, not the drawing. Get used to that. 
when you're drawing meticulously like this. And if your hand's on the image, you'll know, you'll feel, you're like, that doesn't feel quite right. And you can change that if you need to. Sometimes you just have to, but you'll know to be very, very careful if you do. Okay. <clears throat> so coming up and around here can be a little looser with it. And a little bit darker and tighter as we come through. <clears throat> See where that's a little wider. Can darken that in. Run in through there. And loosen that up. And light or darken it up. Excuse me. Coming around over. Keep it soft in through there. That's going to help you. Keep it soft in those transitions. Until you have a harder edge. And you've got, you can't keep it soft. Yeah. Edge quality and value usage are the two big separators from a good amateur and somebody who's really on their way to becoming a, a strong, understanding professional. So keep that, keep that in mind. Really work. Be mindful of the edges and value usage. That helps. And then later on when you get it, it comes together and you, you just have it. It probably came together me, you know, really when I started Right before I started teaching, well, I was about 28, 27, 28, when I, cause I've been drawing forever, but to I me, mean, really, really put it together where I could do it backwards and forwards and I could teach it and talk about it and demonstrate it and never really mess it up. Um, that was then, but that, you know, tons of hours to get there. Age is not so much an important issue as experience, so. Um, Nobody can get there without lots of experience. Some are more naturally in tuned, but doesn't mean that those who not, aren't quite as naturally in tuned. It just those those people will probably have to work harder to pull themselves to that point. Uh, th those that are a little bit more naturally inclined um, will probably go on quicker because it's easier. And in, in, I guess that's what naturally inclined means. It's just easier. It doesn't mean that you couldn't do it if you're not. <clears throat> there you go, a little darker, keeping it soft in through here, and it kind of, right in through here now, as we start to work the coarse shadow, it's larger and broader, but right in through here, see where it gets thicker, the coarse shadow, and then it starts to take off higher, doesn't it? Here, okay, and over. So I'm going to work that value a little bit closer. <clears throat> In through, okay. <clears throat> that works, starting to work pretty well for us. Now, what I want to do now is to um, find the, the outer boundary of this bigger fold that we're working with, and it's it's not here, but we see how the dark anchors it here. So what I need to find now is use this dark over here in my drawing, right through here, where it is and through, and where it's on the thickness of where it on is on the other side. So about right here, I'm going to use my hard edge just for a little bit to capture it, to see it. I'm going to stand back up too so I can manage it uh, better. <clears throat> Through there. Okay. I just saw something I don't like. I think it needs to be a little bit thinner. This dark needs to be thicker and through there, and a little softer. Alright, so back here, so about right in through here, 
where it catches this little width of dark. So I'm going to catch that width. And see how it runs into that curve? We'll pick up on that curve in a little while here and then over to there. All that good stuff. Those zigzaggy curves, and that cool stuff. But what I want to get is here this boundary of the dark here. Because it's starting to narrow, isn't it? But it doesn't get narrow too quickly. And it ends about right over here. So about right through here is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to make a little str stronger line. That won't stay there forever. But I want to show myself where that line is. And so I can... <clears throat> Uh, have a have a be better bearing on what I've what I need to do here. It's kind of hard to to see through all that as it it comes up higher, doesn't it? So never put this over here. See that? See working your your hand there. Kind of comes up to here a little bit. And it separates in all kinds of places. And we have this little thicker dark here. That tells us, so I'm just using the outer edge for now. Working that dark against it through here. Okay. Because what's happening is there's a lighter area. It's a little bit thicker, so there's a roll and a fold, and then there's kind of another one. So I probably dug my dark maybe a little too much into it, so about right up in through here. That's why it's hard to tell, so you have to be careful. And through. This is a good anchor point right here for the fold right in through there. Go a little darker where I can see things out as well. <clears throat> Okay, so it's actually underneath here and coming up and a little bit over. It's okay, pretty close, not bad in through there. All right, so <clears throat> I'll take now is we'll work, I'll work up a little here and then we'll come down and meet the two together as well. I think that, that would be a good run uh, too. Let's go find all that. Okay. Put my head not too far in the way and through here. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser and my mono. Have it in handy. And about right in through here. It's probably a little higher than what I had. I need to take some of that out. Just gently. Okay. Kneaded and or um, a mono eraser is a hard firm eraser. We can just take and dab some of that out. It's like a little bit too far with the dark. I want to bring it to about right in through here. This is where I needed it to be. Not quite as thick either. Okay, and then coming on down like so. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to take that area next to it, it's kind of like a little correction. Just dab through there like so, okay. A little blunting technique, kind of masking, keeping that edge. Take that. There we go, like so, okay. <clears throat> Pulled that line back out. <clears throat> so I can find that shadow, get under that collar a little bit better, right in through there. That's it, and there it is. I'm going to come on down and follow that light through, right in through there. That'll catch that over. That's it. Now, let's find it over here. So there's a little crevassing agent, a little fold, if you will, right there. The darker line it kind of comes over that coarse shadow in through here right and it starts to soften up like that and through and then we can catch what's going to be a little bit more 
core shadow in through there. So it doesn't make this shadow so thick. I didn't do, can you see that? It's hard. It's hard to see all the separations. It's not easy. It's probably driving you nuts. But use it as a guide. You know, you don't have to draw exactly how I draw with me. This is just demonstration guides. And so be mindful of that. It doesn't have to be exact. It probably, of course, it won't be. It's too hard to do. Because you've got against the squid there, of that squid shape, dark, and then it gets a little bit lighter in there, and it catches, so I've got to lighten the back up and through a little bit. <clears throat> and you just run this even eraser over it, just to take it off a little bit. You can hear that noise where I'm just dabbing, stamping it downward, like so, to help sep help me get all that off of there and separate it. So we get that dark, and then we've got next to it, okay, some little crevasse in there. There we go, and this is coarse shadow, but on a lighter, a little bit lighter side of the coarse shadow, right in through here up and nestling itself in through there and so on this other side is a light light form shadow <clears throat> catching that back for now through and over So running through here, it gets a little confused. Okay, let's see what I've got. Step back a little bit. I'm going to erase a little bit here. To catch those together and bring them together. So as I come down in this border here of the fold where the light is and dark shadow, yeah. So that what that needs to do is come in and over. Okay, so I can take mono eraser here. Take that there. We're going to get an hour. Got something a little bit better to work with. So I can see it further. Excuse my head. Okay. <clears throat> and so following this thicker coarse shadow here on the edge, upward a little bit now. We can catch it and it comes up and through. And it's now going to fade a little bit over and thicker and get into that reflected line through here. Because it's soft transition. It's very banded. Okay, through. That's soft. So now we can we can take it up. And it gets more intense, didn't it, as it came down. It got a little bit darker and thinner too as well down in through here. And we can even take the mono eraser and thin that out just a little bit. But keep it soft since it's dab. Just kind of nice and thin that out. Gets to that point down there. <clears throat> okay. edge here, course, lighter core shadow and through here and then meets up on that darker edge running through here and here. Could still go a little thicker. Right in through there and we'll continue to take it up and we're starting to see it now come together a bit better. To work really hard to keep those separations working. This can go a little thicker, but it's a still soft edge on the right side, especially. And it's, these are all like going in and going up a little bit very softly. 
catching some reflected light through there. So it's not easy drawing, that is for sure. Here, right through. There we are. soften that before it gets to the light there on that other side. Now I'm going to take my kneaded, uh, kneaded eraser and I'm going to bring out the reflected light just a little bit more than I had. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, set it up where it is, and just take it back up in the value. Make it glow a little bit more than I had before against that dark. So it's dark against medium against a medium coarse shadow that's a little bit darker than what I'm doing right now. Like drawing really relevant stripes and getting the edges to work for you. Because it's got to be darkest here, where my, where my pencil is, and it's got to be a little lighter, right, to glow, and it's got to be a little bit darker for the core shadow, and then it gets light again, doesn't it, where the light is, and this could come down to kind of a, a sword-like tip, about right in through here, there we go, it curves in a little, maybe a little bit more, okay. And that gets us into a darker area. And that's working that gets us on this on this rider side. I want to bring this dark softly over just a little bit further. Bring out that light and then the light really starts to come down here. And soften this. And soften. <clears throat> it's starting to work for us nicely. All right, so running through this area, just going to go a little lighter, as I'm saying. Right in through here. Light that up just a little. Bring out that shape and light. Around that core shadow here. And then it splits into a separate core shadow up here a little bit further. We see that over. It's a little bit thicker. Coming down, but softer. It runs. It kind of gets caught in a little folding, cupping. Because this actually goes, goes underneath, but it's catching the line where, where it's laid in. So that's why it does that, just a little. That's working pretty well now that we met up there. This comes over through here and a little darker. <clears throat> there we go. And kind of crevasses darker into that corner where it meets up with that fold there. It still needs some work. <clears throat> Through here, okay, binding it over, good. I think we're feeling pretty good in through there. This might need a little shaping, a little changing. There we go, like so around. just a little. Okay. And then where that pleating comes together, where it gets that little, excuse me, fine point right in through. 
this one here. <clears throat> Running through this little area. Kind of a nice little dark point it comes to. And then it turns, cups, and goes this way. Kind of started that coarse shadow run underneath it. Running through here, and it's pretty hard edge just right through there. A little point. Then I'm going to take my Japanese mono eraser and go into a little point there to make that a little bit more of a crease, creasing point. Then probably right here as well. The second well, kind of a mirror image of that is sort of right here. I think I captured that one a little bit better than that one. But it works pretty well. Okay, so now <clears throat> I want to come back and start it over here and work and meet meet up over. It's my goal here is to meet up over. So I think we're doing pretty well. Here this might break off just a little here. Run right through here and pick up a little vein kind of right there. They separate just so it's not really that important but I thought I'd pick it up anyway because I can see it. You can see it, you could probably do it. And then we've got over here, excuse my head, I'm trying to do the best I can to get out of the way. Um, Get to look at my bald spot today. Awesome. And that made you excited, huh? Okay, here. Okay. Then just getting this coarse shadow underneath here. Right, and it fades to the edge of fold, and then it just kind of fades through the light right into there. And as we come over, underneath, we've got another one right about here. It gets a little darker through there, it takes us through, start to pull it out, bring it out, now a little further through there. Can you see it start to emerge in that top? You can start to see that nicely come through. <clears throat> okay. So. What we want to pick up now is that dark where it dark it ends, comes down through here, okay, and we're going to catch another light in there. I'm going to put a little tone now uh, here, because this is all going to be coarse shadow in through this area, and lighter kind of medium coarse shadow at that means it's not completely very dark shadow and reflective line. Kind of get that one through to there and downward to the kind of ending crevasse down there. Right where it ends. All right there and fades out. We can pull that out. So it works pretty well for us. Right in through there. Then later on we'll bring that a little bit darker value against that that edge, that background tone. It'll really clean that out pretty nicely. <clears throat> I could do it now, but I want to keep going with this section. We'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. So, now, let's come on the left side of this and see what we've got. So we've got this darker area in through here. <clears throat> Sit down and reach across. Keep my head out of the camera a little bit better. So we're gonna read, see where this line is? This little shape I have here. Now I wanna read that line better. So I'm gonna reach for my mono eraser. And I wanna take that idea where it comes up here and get that line out of there further. Because it comes up all the way to about Let's see where I can end this about right in through there, doesn't it? So we want to pick that light out a little further in that edge. We start to lose that edge. 
softly, and then it picks up. You think it's this light, but it's not. It's it's a that's another complete fold that we've already kind of got. I'll bring that out a little further here a little bit. We can bring that out. I'll have to come out a little bit. I can go a little thicker. So that helped me to find that even better. Go take that. So coming on now this side here, again, we see the dark, so the dark is really helping us here, especially up here, and then see how it fades, fades gradually, and then it gets into a lot of reflective light, which, which separates um, itself and it gets into this coarse shadow, which can go just a little bit darker as it almost is negligently the same as the, the deeper crevasse in there, but then it gets pulled out. So it's a very complex little maneuver to keep your mind uh, uh, focused on what's what's happening and what you can what you can see through here. Okay, a little bit of a tick there. Okay, all right. So now with that light removed up higher, we can add our core shadow. Very soft, darker core shadow. Okay, in through here. And see this red as the separation dark right in through this area, didn't it? Right? Here and here. So we separated that out. That's the 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 end of the fold there. The, and it gets even harder edged here as it comes down. It's gonna to come to a point a little bit down into here. Right there. Roughly, all that curve, all that cool curve stuff comes. Those are the fun parts, I think. Gives me something to anchor. All these stripes kill me. Is it killing you too? It's killing me, killing me. There we go. Get a little darker in there. Keep that simple, sim simple shadow shape. So it works through. Okay, so we can anchor that, and then as it comes through, you notice how it gets softer? It starts to just fade, doesn't it? Right into here. That's what gets so confusing, and it fades to reflected light, and then next to it, and on top of that, around the sun, is the coarse shadow over and through here. So boy, oh boy, is that complex. Right in through there which fades out and gets us all the way to really down and through to this cur cool curved area right here right here okay so I had to come down here to help me and I can tighten that up we'll get to that in a minute I know I say those all the time we do we get to those things but, it's, but I want to show you what's happening how complex to read this is is here's the core shadow. It's kind of all grouped together. It's got a little little band of little tiny reflected light line there, doesn't it? And out. Okay, and up. Right in through here and over, kind of zigzaggy and around, kind of curved through, like so. And then downward and then out, and then we pick it back up where I had it. And just see how that's just fades and it gets dark in there and it's separated by a little bit of reflected light. Ooh. And it gets really complex, I'm telling you. Got some hard drawing in there, folks. Right in through there. Because we come up here and then it just catches into core shadow right through there. So it blends together and then it when it catches a nice core shadow here. Nope, which we kind of had started, but we we erased that light out. Just a little dark next to the left side of the light. Not too dark because it's a core shadow. It's not a crevasse or a deepening. That's on the right of it. And right in through here, and then it starts to all fade into shadow. A little bit of harder edged right up in there and it fades out oh wow fun stuff not really that's hard drawing 
but well worth it. I think it's you know it's coming along. You can tell we're starting to to make some real uh, inroads into into all this complexity. <clears throat> which is what we've done here. So we'll come through here, poor shadow. If you name these, you know where you're at. You can help yourself out and by naming them in through here. A little bit darker, a little bit thinner. There we go, nice little turn. Reflected light, coarse shadow on this edge. Coarse shadow here, just a little bit, just a little bit darker. And through here, and then down, and it disappears, and that line makes a line there. And then next to it, some light, and then more coarse shadow. And then through here, not too much darker. Coming down over, okay, through. Start to turn it a little bit. Coming around. I'm going to take now my mono eraser and right on this edge, light here on this other side, tighten up that edge so it reads nicely as a dip or a crevasse in there, which is just underneath roll. That's what I meant by the crevasse if you're confused. Those of you that are not necessarily native English speakers, that might actually be easier just to watch and turn, tune me out. That's the secret here at NKU. A lot of students tune me out. That's okay. It's part of the job. Okay, coming through that helps. Through here. Okay. So coarse shadow now up, up top. See how it's a little darker than the reflected light, which creates that little line of reflected light, doesn't it, right there? Run right into there. So, uh, defining this little area, focus, little divot in through here. Here we go, turning it over and just making it coarse shadow and which is defining the reflected light in both. That little lined area, right in through there. Probably only the faint of heart are still watching this video. Coming down to this little lip and through and over. It's pretty tight and dark. We almost lose it. We'll catch it back over and through here. There we go. Catching it back through. And we'll pick it up over here. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, and then we'll come through and over. Alright, and we'll come on down here. Because we're underneath that little curve, aren't we? This little cool little zigzag area that's about to happen too as well. <clears throat> or earlier. Okay. Alright, so coming now to this little divot area, 
which is cool. See how that, that, that core shadow created like a little reflective light line? See that little light line through there? It's reflective light, really tight in through there. So let's work on this little shape. Here, it's almost just two values. And let's get that tighter edge a little bit. Here. So we're getting just the separation now of this shape. Okay. This kind of curvy shape here, and then it curves around. Just working it through, keeping it simple. This is core shadow here at the top. See how it separates into a darker little ridge where that turns because this fold is turning this way. It really, it'll need some value on the dark. You probably won't see it on the image, which is a shame, but it, to make it really read like it's turning, you need a little bit of value out here. It's pretty common, pretty, uh, not common, but pretty basic cylinder, cube, sphere, understanding the whole value here. So what happens when we get the shape, which we've got, we get a little coarse shadow here. Yeah, and then so that helps us tell us where the fat part of the turn is. It's soft enough, soft transition enough. We'll keep going with it, we'll bring it over, and it's gonna lead us into this knot a little bit. It's gonna turn underneath, and running through there, there's a little cast shadow right there that I've got, and it might be a little too dark, but we'll get that uh, later here. So core shadow, turning, we'll kind of contour it back and over and let it roll a little bit because it's rolling, rolling, rolling up and over there and then here and then we're going to take uh, this through here like so okay and that's going to Give us a little more reflective light and then get us closer to the shape that we have that we want. Right through there's a little deep little area. There we go. Through here and around. And we're coming through and over to around there. Okay, get that little. Honestly, I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, excuse me, my mono eraser. They got this, they got this shape a little bit. Let's turn it here and over. Dig it out a little bit. We can see a little bit better. <clears throat> and then start to detail it out where it's emerging into this line. You see that here? Back over and around as it curves. Through. Get that the eraser out to do add that subtract subtractive drawing here subtractive. Okay, and around. There we go. And around a curve, so we can start to get some of this working for us. Okay. And this stays lighter, longer, so we can start to erase this out right before these turns are here. So we're getting closer to finishing this area to get to the knot, the great eastern knot on the east side of our drawing. Use a little geography today. Okay, right through there. So it helps me define and pick apart that line a little bit further.